You're listening to The Manning Report with your host, James David Manning. The news behind the headlines. The media and Trump, they have been at odds at war with one another for quite some time. Um, actually, uh, Trump has said that the media uh, is, uh, is the enemy of the people. It's a, you know, it's one of these statements from the Communist Manifesto from back in the 1960s, the little red book of Mao Zedong, or a Lenin back in the 1920s, or Khrushchev, that the media is the enemy of the people. Um, these kinds of statements are strange statements coming out of Trump. Uh, regarding his bout with the Washington Post, uh, and Washington Post, of course, was one exposed Richard Nixon. Without the Washington Post, Richard Nixon, Richard Nixon would still be president, perchance. Uh, but now Ted Koppel says that the media it really is after is really going after Trump, and I'm going to see whether I agree with that. I'll give you my prognostication about that in just a second. I do watch CNN, MSNBC, and Fox. Um, and I think this particular clip we're going to show you today is from Fox News. So Mr. Engineer rolled, rolled this clip uh, regarding Ted Koppel and his statements regarding the media and, and tribulation Trump. Ted Koppel is an absolute pillar of the establishment media. For decades, he was either a globe-trotting correspondent for ABC News, uh, for a quarter century, the anchor of Nightline, an innovative late-night television news program, uh, particularly innovative when it started, when there was virtually no cable TV, a master interviewer. Uh, I've been on Nightline many times. I've worked with Koppel. I know him. Uh, I think he's an extraordinarily talented journalist. And he has weighed in on the coverage of President Trump. Now, I have to add here that based on some previous things he said and written, this guy is not a big fan of President Trump. But he is absolutely eviscerating uh, the press for the coverage because he's an old-fashioned newsman who thinks, believes in what, what we now call fair and balanced. So he uh, was on a forum uh, at uh, a Carnegie Endowment uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said the following. The establishment press is out to get Donald Trump. He, he agrees with the president on that. And he specifically uh, singled out the New York Times and the Washington Post for criticism. Here's more Koppel. We're talking about uh, these two newspapers. We're talking about organizations that I believe have, in fact, decided as organizations that Donald Tr J. Trump is bad for the United States. We have things appearing on the front page of the New York Times right now that would never have appeared 50 years ago. He recalls an anecdote uh, when he, uh, from the campaign. He's having breakfast with his wife. It's right after the Axis Hollywood tape comes out. And Koppel recalls saying to her, I turned to my wife and I said, the Times is absolutely committed to making sure that this guy does not get elected. Uh, Koppel going on to say that Trump is not mistaken when he says the liberal media, for example, um, describe themselves as belonging to the resistance. What does that mean? That's not said by people who consider themselves reporters, objective reporters of facts. So this carries a certain weight, I think, because of Koppel's career and who he is. And also it happens to dovetail with the recent criticism by Jill Abramson, the former executive editor of the New York Times. I was the first to report that in her new book, she describes the news pages of her former newspaper as being unmistakably anti-Trump. And Koppel has said that, uh, you know, if you're on the right defending Trump and if you're on the left bashing Trump in the media, uh, is almost like a business model. And that's exactly what Jill Abramson said about the Times, that being anti-Trump uh, has become its business model. Now, uh, that doesn't mean I agree that everything that the two papers print is bad. First of all, uh, there are a number of reporters at both papers who do uh, political reporting, political analysis, who I think try very hard to be fair. Secondly, uh, some of the investigative reporting on the administration. All right, okay, I think we get the point there, all right, that what's being stated there, that Chris is stating that it's using Ted Koppel, who we know is a flaming liberal and also part of the establishment media uh, that would then say he would run in the circles of the New York Times or Washington Post and CNN and all that crowd, that they're all cousins with one another and they support one another. All their ideas flow in the same river. And but so for Ted Koppel to step out and say that this same group of people that they're out to get Trump should have some significance and should give Trump credibility. 
Now, whether Ted Koppel means to give Trump credibility is one thing, because I don't think that he does, but I think what Howard Kurtz is trying to do here, uh, and his presentation is trying to validate that Trump should, uh, that there's sympathies, or at least understanding, or criticisms against the Washington Post and New York Times and liberal media ought to be clearly uh, leveled by American people and giving Trump some cover and shelter. Okay, let me, that's what's being said, right? Let me give you my take on this. So, right, so you figure, oh, well, well, what's my take? All right, so, so the, the headline grabber here is that the liberal media is out to get Trump. Uh, what Ted Koppel did not say, number one, was that Trump uh, is out to get the media. By that, Trump first started out, he, Trump, first of all, loves the media. I don't care if it's bad publicity, good publicity, Trump loves to be in the media. But when the media began to report on Trump as trash, well, not as trash, but I, that's my terminology, but when the, when the media began to unearth and dig up Trump's inequities or his uh, absolute, his, his in, unintegral, and in many ways, his criminal and shady behavior, they began to report that Trump's response back to that. And that was what the media does. They dig, they dig up dirt. And when they began to dig up dirt on Trump, that's when he began to throw dirt back at them. And so the matter has escalated into who can win the war. Does the power of the presidency and Fox News assisting can destroy the, the, the two teams that are fighting one another. Is that right? Is it fair? Well, my observation of this is that the media, what Ted Koppel could be saying here, because he's washed up and there's nobody interested in him anymore since Nightline, but what Ted Koppel could be potentially trying to say here um, is that the media wants to destroy Trump. Um, they very well might want to do that, but are they doing it in journalistic fashion? Are they staying with what is continued and taught in the journal, journal, journalism schools and what has been the accepted way of doing journalism? Have they crossed the line? which they have not, like Fox News, like Tucker Carlson, like Janine Pirro, like Sh Sean Hannity. These media people that, and I agree, are out to get Trump, but they've not crossed, they are still using the sacredness of journalism as an art and science in order to be able to demonstrate their disdain for Trump. But more importantly, I think, to advise the American people of who Trump is. You know, Fox News was the first, there's a reporter at Fox News that was the first to break the story, or at least get the story, that Stormy Daniels and Tribulation Trump had had a love affair, and Stormy and Steamy and Donald, and that Donald had paid her $130,000 hush money. Wall Street Journal didn't have that. Fox News, I mean, uh, Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, MSNBC didn't have that. That story was first given to a Fox News reporter. And when, it, and this was before the election, a week before the November 2016 election. And when the, 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 the editors at Fox News, Fox Television, were presented with the story, they spiked it. That is to say that they killed the story because they knew that it would hurt Trump's chances a week before the election, especially after the Billy Bush tapes, that it would hurt Trump's uh, uh, chances of election. So they spiked it. So we don't, you're not hearing that. And if what Ted Koppel is trying to say is that Washington Post and, and New York Times would have printed the story, which would have sensed that they were trying to do, do Trump in. So what's the ethics here? What's the ethics? The, the other thing I think is very important as we look at this, and yeah, I would agree, more than the Washington Post is out to get Trump, and they're going to take him down. They, they're out to get him. But as long as they stay within the journalism guidelines and ethics, all is fair. 
I mean, if they cross the line and start doing illegal or unethical things, then we'd have to step back and take away. But here, here's the, here's the op opposite way of looking at this. Barack Hussein, the long-legged Mac Daddy Obama, was protected by the media. Barack Hussein Obama is not a U.S. citizen, natural born. Check it out. Barack Hussein, the long-legged Mac Daddy Obama, is not a natural born citizen. I don't care what they say on MSNBC or CNN or Don Lemon or, 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 or any of them. I don't care what they say, Anderson Cooper, any of them. Barack Hussein Obama was not natural born, did not physically attend Columbia University, presented a false and illegal document to the American people back in April 13th of the year 2010. And yet the media protected him. The same media that's going after Trump protected Obama. And everybody who tried to raise the, the question about how phony the birth certificate was, that it had computer type and uh, Olivetti uh, uh, typewriter type, that it was all mumbo jumbo, the wrong name of the hospital. Obama presented a phony birth certificate. He was never the president. He was illegal. He was ineligible. But yet the media shut out that story, wouldn't let that story ride. So now, so that sword, the Damocles sword, swings both ways. The same media, and this time they use unethical journalism tactics to protect the long-legged Mac Daddy Obama. But when it comes to Trump, I haven't seen them cross the line as of yet, but they are going after him, and ultimately they're going to take him down, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm thankful that they are going after him. That's right. Uh, and Trump himself declared that Obama was illegal and unethical and, and that is his birth certificate. And then he changed his story in order to be able to get elected president. He changed his story. So I, I think that we need to understand what is fair and what is balanced in the process of how the media operates. Um, but with Obama, I think if the media had allowed full investigations and had reported all of the information that was made available to them about that phony birth certificate that Obama presented, we wouldn't have tribulation Trump as president today. Now that's a much longer story of, of which I don't have time to present at present, but both of these boys are as phony as a $3 bill, both of them. We haven't had a president, now listen to me very carefully, we haven't had a legally elected president since Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was the last, illegal, last legally elected president. He said, well, what about George W. Bush? George W. Bush was voted in by the Supreme Court after that horrific battle of the hanging chads down in Florida when they couldn't figure out who the electoral votes from the, from the state of Florida should go to, uh, whether it should go to Albert Gore or to Bush. And the court gave it to Bush. So he wasn't legally elected either. So for the entire uh, 20,000 20, or 2,000, 20, second century, second millennium, we have not had a legal president. None of these boys are legal. None of them. And the media covers that up as well. So, you know, that's my take on this. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon. Uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. 
You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.